I'd like to uh, do a song that I would rather do than any other song there is. It's a love song. It comes from Mexico, and it's called Maragueña Salerosa. Travis Jerome Edmondson was born in Long Beach, California, September 23, 1932. At the age of five, his family moved to Nogales, Arizona, where Travis was introduced to the colorful music of Mexico. After college and a stint in the Army, Travis toured as a solo act. His first big break came in the early 50s when he was invited by Lou Gottlieb to join the Gateway Singers. It's just hard for people to realize the impact now of some of these performers 50 years ago and you know, the whole folk scene. And they were international stars and, and you know, to appear on uh, Ed Sullivan and, and the shows of the time. As a singer-songwriter, Travis played the infamous Hungry Eye and Purple Onion in San Francisco where he performed with many musical heavyweights, including Bob Shane of the Kingston Trio. Probably the best funny story about Travis was when I was, I had a friend of mine at a, at a, a, a hotel at the base of the Heavenly Valley of the Lake Tahoe, where Travis would work on occasion. And I came in, Travis was telling this enraptured audience about how he wrote Scotch and Soda for the Kingston Trio. And as I'm coming in and hearing this at the back of the room of this packed place, I said to him, You're full of. In 1958, Travis and Bud DeShall formed the duo Bud and Travis. Besides traveling the globe, appearing on TV shows and radio, they even performed The Time of Man on the floor of Congress. This famous duo also recorded many albums. Their Latin album, which included Travis's signature Mexican love song, Malagueña Celerosa, sold over a million copies. I had fallen in love with a lot of their uh, Mexican songs like Los Dos, and especially Malagueña. And when I met Victoria, she knew Malagueña, so she taught it to me and we both started singing it together. And, and we've been doing Malagueña for many, many years, many years. now. From 1965 to 1982, while enjoying a successful solo career and living in Arizona, he was named Tucson's Singing Ambassador of Goodwill. In 1982, Travis suffered a paralyzing stroke, ending his professional career. Rosemary called me. It was about time for him to go. We went up through Florence, the back way, and as we're driving, don't want to let's pull off here. Travis always collected rocks. And I picked up a rock for him, and I pulled some creosote off a branch. And we went on to the hospital. Travis was laying in his bed, and he was semi-conscious. He wasn't responsive too much. I put the rock in his hand, and I crushed the creosote and waved it under his nose. And he smiled and nodded his head, you know? That was my friend. He was a man, a performer, and an inspiration. How can you live all those years when you've lost so much that was so important to you and still enjoy life? And as Travis always said, it might not have happened exactly like that, but it should have. De una rosa.